Final game at Huggins Fieldhouse for the 2021-2022 season. It is the men's quarterfinals, or rather first round of the PSAC tournament. It is the number three seed, the Shippensburg Raiders, taking on the six-seeded Lockhaven Bald Eagles from up north. Shippensburg comes into this game 19-8, and and they split the regular season series with Lockhaven each winning on their home floor. The winner of tonight's game will take on East Stroudsburg in the quarterfinals on Wednesday night. That'll be a 7 o'clock tip at East Stroudsburg. This is it for Shippensburg. This is the last time they will be on this floor this season. If they are to win the PSAC tournament after going to East Stroudsburg on Wednesday night, they would then go on the road to the highest remaining seed in the West. Could be Indiana. Could be Mercyhurst. Who knows? Could be anybody, really. But the West is going to host the PSAC semifinals on Saturday and Sunday, which you can watch live on the PSAC network depending on wherever it is. But Indiana is the number one seed in the West, and Shippensburg's already got wins there and against Pitt Johnstown this season. So they're battle-tested. They're on the road uh, this season. They've won many a big game. But tonight here, first things first, Braden Treaster joins me here tonight for the call of this one. Shippensburg ended the regular season on a hot streak against Kutztown. Shot 43% the other night. 19 to 23 from the free throw line. Put Kutztown away pretty early in that first half. Lockhaven, they played Millersville tough in the first half. They faded down the stretch. Millersville is the number one seed in the East, so obviously we know how good they are. This figures to be a pretty back and forth game, though. This is a Lockhaven team that its athleticism and its transition game and its physicality gave Ship some problems, even though they won on this floor about a month ago. And, and it's actually a few a few weeks ago up in Lockhaven. Lockhaven ended up winning. But again, it's a, like you mentioned, a physical battle. Uh, not only Shippensburg had guards getting in foul trouble early in the first half, but Lockhaven's bigs got in a foul trouble in the first half as well. So it's going to be a very exciting game. These two coaching staffs know each other. Uh, Mike Nestor, Brian Alexiak, they're both Shippensburg alum. Welcome them back to Haggis Fieldhouse. Oh, it's always great to see them back here, at Lockhaven, representing Lockhaven. Yeah, it certainly is, and that was an overtime game at Lockhaven in which the Eagles shot 5-for-5 five five in the overtime period, they and uh, they put four players in double figures in that game. They've lost the last two games coming into tonight here by 19 and 35, respectively. In that second meeting, Shippensburg was hammered on the offensive glass, and they actually got outscored in overtime 16-4, to four, so they really never had a shot to win that game in overtime. They just could not find the bucket mm-hmm. in that overtime period. They're hoping tonight that it does not go the way of that last meeting. Let's take a look at the Lockhaven starting lineup first. You know the five, Montague, Washington, Fidelis, McPherson, and Granberry. Montague played 43 minutes in the second meeting against Shippensburg and scored 21 points. Also ended up with 11 rebounds, but he really struggled here in the first meeting, shooting just one of nine. And Washington, who has started 26 of 26 games, is ranked ninth in the conference with 4.4 assists per game. For the Raiders tonight, you know the starting five of Biss and Hardy, Johnson, Carter, and Sleva. There is not a hotter player on the planet than Jake Biss right now. He is hitting 27 a game in his last four, shooting 53%, including 47 from three-point territory. Just today named the East Division Player of the Week, and rightfully so. Oh, by the way, he's also hit 16 of his last 17 free throw attempts, and he's eighth in the conference in three-point percentage. First game against Lockhaven, 25. Second game struggled up there, 5 of 16. But his running mate, Dom Sleva, equally as hot. 54 rebounds in the last four games, and he's averaging 17 points in the last three. So those two have done a ton of damage the last week of the season. This team needed to find some momentum late. They did, and this is... He's shooting flashes of it this season, but he is playing his best basketball right now. And it's the right time for the defending PSAC Eastern Division Player of the Year to get hot at, especially going into the playoffs. I to mention Saturday, Jake Biss had scored 21 points against Goodstown. I, I'll even say it, it was probably one of the most quiet 21 points I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it really was. It, it was. <laughs> you know, you really wouldn't think he would have 21 points in that game the way he played. But yeah. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys, that once, once he's on, you better, you better find him. And this Better is find a, on the floor. a Lockhaven team that has had a knack of upsetting Shippensburg. We just mentioned the overtime game up there a couple weeks ago. Back in the last season that they played, 19-20, and 20, Ship was nationally ranked and was upset by this Lockhaven team. So Mike Nestor knows how to pull uh, the upset. He was here from 2000 to 2011. Played at Ship under Roger Goodling and 
This is the third straight appearance for the Eagles under Nestor in the PSAC tournament for Shippensburg. Chris Fight is ninth season as head coach, and they are 7-3 and three in the last 10 meetings with Lockhaven, 34-11 and 11 at home, but have not won a PSAC championship since 2017. The tap is controlled by Biss and the Raiders, and that is how we'll start things here tonight from Huygens Fieldhouse. Lockhaven starts it in a man-to-man. Johnson, Sleva up top. He has been hot shooting the ball as well. A little back screen action. Looked like the start off for Shippensburg. They get it to Sleva on the screen. Steps inside the arc. Finds Biss. Deep three to start things. And he picks up right where well, he left off on Saturday. And he drains it. Well, as we mentioned, you defending PSAC player of the year in the, in the East Division. It's good to see him knock down his first jumper of the day. Lockhaven is going to look to get the ball into McPherson sometimes. Washington drives, and he lays it up and in to answer. That was a great, great attack. Way to attack the rim there by Eli Washington, the six-foot sophomore guard from local, local nearby Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hempfield graduate. Ryan Hardy on the drive. Kick out to Carlos Carter. Foul on jumper by Carter is no good. Rebound to the baseline in Washington. And Washington and Hempfield, where Roger Goodling's brother Warren Goodling used to be the head coach, and he will step away and shoot again. And Eli Washington's two for two, and he's got the four points for Lockhaven. Good move by, uh, good in and out move there by uh, Eli Washington to get the defender off balance. Hand down, man down is one thing you normally will hear. Carter finds Biss, three pointer on the way again, and that one clangs off to the right. Towards the corner and out of bounds, so Lockhaven will get possession back with almost two minutes gone here in the first half. A little off balance jumper there by Jake Biss. But again, he's known to make those. He's Washington and Biss matchup. Sleva and McPherson inside. Washington drives. That is McPherson with it. Lost the handle. Spins on Sleva with the right hand and scores. That's another thing you want to do if you're locked and take advantage of the size you got down low. Shippensburg not a very big team. One no. thing they can do is shoot the ball well. Lost that size with Nedro out for the season as Biss whips it around. Carter inside to Sleva. They double him up. Rotated around, Hardy on the far side, steps inside the arc, and he banks it in from a tough angle. Good ball movement there for Shippensburg. Also, I would say a good credit, got to give credit to Mark Anthony Fidel stepping in on help side there. As uh, Lockhaven attempted to trap that ball screen, they did a great job of rotating. Shippensburg does a better job rotating the ball out of it and getting a good look. Granberry was bumped towards the sideline by Johnson. Ten to shoot. Washington, hot hand early on. Inside, McPherson shuffled the feet, got the ball back, goes up, no, Johnson pulls it down. That's one thing you want to do if you're shipping for contest shots at the rim. Make things difficult. Don't Carter. necessarily go for blocks, just wall up. Carter, fade away, tough shot, no. McPherson tipped the rebound out towards the corner, and Washington's there to get it. And if you're lock and you want to keep Dom Sleva off the glass. Behind the back, nifty move, reverse layup attempt by Washington, no good. Scrum for the loose ball. Lockhaven keeps it alive. Granberry fires a three, and he got it. That's one guy who got That was a key. He was one guy who was a key for Lockhaven's victory up in Lockhaven. Daquan Granberry knocked down a few big shots for the Bald Eagles. He's attempted now 48 threes in the last three games and four minutes. Johnson drives off the window. Tough angle again, and McPherson the rebound. Early Mo after that Biss three to Lockhaven here. Move it! Move it! Lockhaven defending real well, making things difficult at the rim. Ever since that first possession. McPherson step back, drains that one. And all of a sudden, it's a six-point Lockhaven lead as we played almost five minutes here in the first half. And Lockhaven shooting five for seven from the field. Getting good looks. Oh, and Biss, miscommunication, but Hardy steps up to pick it. Up and keep it alive for the Raiders. This foul on jumper on the way. No rebound. Sleva had his fingertips on it, but McPherson's able to pull it in. 
As I mentioned earlier, I think McPherson's going to be, Jesse McPherson's going to be a key contributor here for Lock Games. They want to get a win on the road. He's got to find Dom Sleva, one, one of the top rebounders in the league here in the PSAC East. McPherson doing a great job of boxing him out on the defensive end. Johnson on Washington now. Eli trying to separate. Gets it out to Granberry with three to go. Defense by Ship. Granberry throws it up and almost falls, but Johnson snags the board. Here comes the Raiders. Johnson steps through everybody and Rashawn to the window and he lays it up and in. And that's one thing you don't want if you're Lockhaven. If you, you, Rashawn Johnson going downhill, he's a very dangerous guy that gets above the rim. I think one key contributor here you're going to need if you're Shippensburg is Carlos Carter. He, he did not shoot the ball well last game against Lockhaven. That was a great pass. Wrap around Montague, but they throw it away. Speaking of Carter, Carlos, no look inside to Sleva off the window and in, and just like that, Chippensburg's back within two. And that was a great job of Dom Sleva running his route, staying in the middle of the floor, finding an opening in transition. That's one thing I always love to see. I always love to see a big man run in transition, get, a, get to the opening, stay in the middle of the floor, get a layup out of it. Man, Sleva, as we know, all five guys on the floor are going to have to defend him at one point or another tonight with his 6'6 size. Montague, solid defense that time by Shippensburg, but Montague's going to draw the contact, and he'll shoot a pair with 14.07 to go. That'll take us to the timeout, and we will take one as well. Two-point lead for Lockhaven. You're watching the men's PSAC tournament on the PSAC Network. At Shippensburg University, we don't just celebrate success, we live it. With endless academic opportunities, a vibrant campus life, and a community of alumni support, at SHIP, you design the future you want. There are so many reasons SHIP is it. Early on, it's Lockhaven with a two-point lead as the Eagles come out. Blistering at 63%. Chickensburg sort of settled in here a little bit and balance across the board for the Raiders. Johnson, Sleva, Biss, and Hardy all have buckets. Four points each early on for Washington and McPherson, and Granberry's got the other three for the Eagles. Again, the winner to East Stroudsburg on Wednesday night. That is the Indiana half of the bracket, too, so it would not be a championship rematch between IUP and SHIP if both get there. They would meet in the semis on Saturday, and if that happens, that's at IUP, and SHIP has already got a win on the road up there this season, so they have no qualms about making that trip. But it's going to be a long week if the Raiders are going to claim the PSAC championship, which they are certainly, despite being shorthanded, capable of doing this season. Two coaches that are really familiar with each other if we see that semifinal matchup. Chris Fight being a longtime <laughs> assistant of Coach Lombardi out there in IUP. You ever want to get your money's worth in a conversation, just mention Joe Lombardi's name to Chris Fight when you're chatting with him. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he's, a, he's a piece of work, I'll say that. Joe Lombardi, great guy. I got to meet him a few times. Montague with the free throw attempt. And he was certainly entertaining here two years ago, the last season we had when Indiana claimed the PSAC championship against Shippensburg. Similar situation, Raiders defeated IUP, then number three in the country here on a Saturday night in December, and then IUP got the rematch and the one that counted. Hardy, tough defense. Johnson has to save that, but he steps on the end line. Yeah, that's tough defense down there. I believe that was Mark Anthony Fidelis defending Kion Hardy. It's Kion Hardy trying to take advantage. I'd say he's a little bit, I'd say a little bit bigger than Fidel Fidelis, but they're both around the same size. Fidelis with it in his hands. McPherson, no changes for Ship Roll. out of the timeout. Dallas again, McPherson with 13 to shoot. McPherson makes his move, cuts across. Sleva standing his ground. Dom, good job to stand pat and get the rebound for Shippensburg as Biss comes up court. Shippensburg starting to cool down, make everything difficult. Carter, they try to post Johnson, has to go back up, and Johnson sticks at her. Washington rather sticks that hand in there and goes all the way and lays it up and in. 
Lockhaven doing a great job defending in a half court set right there. Johnson, Hardy, Biss, Sleva, and Carlos Carter. He's got the ball in his hands right now. Carter backing down the defender, and he is fouled on the floor. Shippensburg, that position, looking to get a little flex action, a little flex screen to get Carlos Carter some position in the low block. That'll be on Montague. His first. Fist inbound. Up top, Johnson. 20 to shoot after the shot clock reset. Carter, double team inside. They go to Sleva. Sleva out to Biss. Deep three on the way. Jake got another one. Open look for Biss again. He hits the second three of the night, and it's down to a one-point Lockhaven lead. Again, a little ball movement after double screen, double double team on a screen on the ball screen between Carlos Carter and uh, Dom Sleva. Dom Sleva also getting doubled once he got the ball in the post, finding an open man, Jake Biss. Washington drives on Biss. Floater, tough angle for Eli Washington, and he gets it to fall. Eli Washington, really good with the left hand. Biss inside Sleva. Sleva makes the move, and he gets the beautiful roll. Beautiful jump stop. Called a bully move. Getting a hook shot, left hand hook shot. That's a, that's a Sleva family trait right there is a hook shot. Top of the circle, it's Fidelis. Isaiah Stewart to come in at the next stop for Lockhaven, which will be right now. We get an offensive foul on Lockhaven. That is going to be, I believe, on Granberry. Yep. We'll get a time Get a timeout on the floor here with 11.40 to go in the first half. It's a one-point Lockhaven lead. You're watching live coverage of the men's PSAC tournament on the PSAC network. And passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student-athletes are honored as scholar-athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. One-point advantage for Lockhaven as we got 11.40 to go in the first half. And Raiders starting to heat up at 55%. Lockhaven still at 64%. And a good one brewing here. Just over halfway to go in this first half and a pretty good game so far. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, Lockhaven started off the game really strong from the field. Uh, a lot of effort here from uh, McPherson. And, uh, Eli Washington having eight, eight of the 15 points. He's starting off the game strong. Again, all, both teams, all starting five guys are averaging 10 a game or more. Yeah, it is a very balanced attack for Lockhaven. Not one guy really will wow you. Maybe Granberry when he gets hot, but Fidelis has had a chance a couple times this season to show what he can do as well. Carter hands off to Biss. They go back to Carter. Three-pointer on the way, short by Lowe's. That one's tipped out of bounds by, oh, they say it's off of Johnson, but it looked like Granberry had the inside position and knocked it out. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Johnson may have got up a little higher than Granberry there. I mean, Rashawn Johnson, a really good athlete. Isaiah Stewart, number 12, was in there for Lockhaven as Washington gets it. And he throws an elbow into Hardy, and Hardy... To clear himself a little bit there. He got poked up top. He got a wince there. He's got his, looks like his left or right, right eye. The, yeah. Elbow right to the face. Not comfortable. It's the beauty of the offense. Biss and he are both interchangeable at the point guard spot. Biss will pull the trigger on the three, and he got another one. His third of the half already for Jake Biss, and he is red hot again tonight with nine. And we still got 10 minutes to go in the first half. Three for four from the field, Jake Biss. Three for four from three-point line out, should I say. Three for five from the field. Not a guy you want to get up, 
not a guy from if you're opposing team from Pittsburgh. You, you want to see with a hot hand. Carter swipes that one away. Here comes Biss. Hands it off to Johnson. Rashawn, Hardy, and now Carter again. 10.25 to go in the first half. And Carter trying to hit that on the wing. Throws it away. What a dangerous cross-court pass there. Washington traveled. And Mike Nestor <laughs> just throwing his arms up. I get asked a lot why we talk about the opposing coach so much during these broadcasts. Well, it's simple. The bench is right next to us. We are at one end of the table, so we're not we're not at midcourt. We're at the we're on the lock haven side of the court. So when Nestor's working the coach's box, he is literally right in front of us almost the entire game. That's Blocked by Granberry. swatted out of there by Granberry. Great block and help side there by DePaul. By the Quan Granberry. Daquan Granberry. Excuse me. Everybody always says, well, why don't you talk about Chris Fight? Well, because he's on the other end of the floor. I can't really see him too well, but I can see Mike Nestor because he's literally four feet in front of me right now. I'm going to foul underneath. That's on Rashawn Johnson. On Rashawn Johnson yep. His first. Cross two horns. And you can hear Mike Nestor right there as well. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. I'll we'll let you know if it's bad. Huh? Like prime example Saturday, we heard a uh -huh. little hot mic from Bernie Driscoll, Driscoll yeah. from Coatstown. Looks like number 20, James Price, to check in here for Lock Haven. The 6'7 junior from Joplin, Maryland, went to Archbishop Hurley. Shot clock will sit at 20 with 9.37 to go in the first half. Washington will. Do the honors. Up top it goes. Granberry shaking by. Johnson pushes off Johnson. They're going to call him for the offensive foul. They're going to say travel. Well, they can argue all they want on the lock haven side. It was either a travel or a push off. Yeah. He was going to get called for one or the other, and they got him for the travel. And, you, and, if, and if you're lock haven, you, you'd rather have it a travel than a push off. You don't want Granberry picking up a second early here in the. I would say midway through the first half. Johnson open for three. That's short. Rebound into the corner, and it's controlled by Lockhaven. Here comes Fidelis. Poke from behind by Hardy, and Biss has a two-on-two two with Carter. Biss is stripped. Carter picks him up. Swatted out of there by Granberry again. Here comes Washington. They had numbers that they wanted it, but they couldn't look down the floor fast enough. We're going to get a travel on Lockhaven again, and another turnover with nine minutes to go in the half. Fidelis, Fidelis had a good jump stop. He just lost his footing. You teach some players to land on two. You can savage either pivot foot after that. But uh, unfortunately, Mark Anthony Fidelis, a little slip and fell. Couldn't gain his footing. 8.54 to go in the first half. A little Iverson cut here. Carter, screen by Johnson. This hands it off to Kion Hardy. Hardy around the dial in the lane. Kion, nice backdoor pass to Johnson who throws it down Ooh. with the one-handed dunk. And Rashawn Johnson is a prime example of you see the back of your defender's head, you cut. And he, he caught his defender blacking a little bit in the help side. And Kion Hardy doing a great job of finding the high flyer from Philadelphia. Kyan Hardy, we didn't mention him in the onset, but he is also playing red hot right now. He had a big game on Saturday against Kutztown, his former team. Sleva dives for it, palmed the ball, got it thrown out of there. Washington, no, and Los rips down the rebound. Corner to Biss. Three-pointer on the way for Jake, no. Rebound, long one to Washington. Here comes Eli the other way, one on two. And he will reset, go back to Stewart off the window. The basket counts, and a foul for Isaiah Stewart with 7.46 to go in the first half. That'll send us to the timeout. We'll take one as well. It's a two-point lead for Shippensburg. You're watching the men's PSAC tournament on the PSAC Network. It's time to make the PSAC yours. More than 7,500 student-athletes working to become champions in 23 championship sports. 
at 18 universities, educating more than 118,000 students and supported by an alumni base of over 900,000. All in and all ready to make the PSAC yours. It's the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Two-point lead for the Raiders as Rashawn Johnson provides the thunder. You'll see the backdoor pass here with Hardy. This was a beautiful pass, and Hardy just keeping the position alive and then moving without the ball. Johnson, there it is. That is why Shippensburg has a two-point lead right now with 7.46 to go in the first half. Well, it's been a pretty good back-and-forth game. Both teams shooting the ball pretty well. Jake Biss hot again. Balance like we expected from Lockhaven, although Eli Washington's done most of the scoring here with eight in the first half. As we mentioned Saturday, Jake Biss started off the season with a, I believe, a lower body injury. Uh, may, may have been a calf injury, if I remember right. Yes. If I remember correctly. It doesn't look like that calf's hurting that much no. recently. No, <laughs> it does not. Couldn't have picked a better time to get hot. One of those typical March Although we're not quite into March yet. Got about four and, a half, yeah, four and a half hours yet. But one of those stereotypical March runs, guy just puts you on, the, on his back and says, let's go. And that is Jake at the moment as Stewart makes the free throw attempt. Play a Stewart finishing the three-point play. Off of a nice cut off the ball. Jake. On the floor, spin move, fade away, lost the ball. Washington has been active in the first half, comes away with it, goes all the way to the bucket, lays it up, no, and Carlos Carter the rebound. Jake, Outlet to Biss, looking down the floor for Johnson. Rashawn out to the corner, open three for Sleva, no, rebound. Hardy, man, he flew in there to tip that. It's out of bounds, off of Lockhaven. It'll stay with Ship with 7.15 to go in the half. A little chaotic possession there, a lot of tips, uh, but... Got to give credit to Carlos Carter making that layup very difficult for Eli Washington. Sleeve off the inbound to Jake. Fade away, and he hits another one. Jake Biss cannot miss at the moment. He is four of seven here in the first half and has 11. When Biss gets rhythm, he is very dangerous. And this is definitely not a side of 11 either. Inside, Hardy had it for a moment out to the corner. Montague for three. No, Hardy the rebound. Ship in transition. Hardy all the way to the bucket. He's stripped off of Hardy. So it's back to Lockhaven with 6.46 to go in the first half. If you're if you're Kyle and Hardy there, maybe you hold it a little bit, get an offensive possession. It looked like you were going 2 on 4 Didn't really have the numbers against you. Montague, crossover, Carter stays with him. Wanted to go back door, they cut that off. Granberry now with 15 to shoot. Hands it off to Washington. Eli has been very busy here in the first half. Back door, just out of the reach of Biss, and Stewart lays it in. Again, great movement away from the ball by Isaiah Stewart again, getting himself another bucket. Sees Biss overplaying, he goes back door. 6-10 to go in the first half. It's a one-point lead for Shippensburg. Carter turns, gives it back to Sleva. Sleva crossover out to the corner and Carter. Carlos thought about it. We'll step inside the corner. Fade away for Carlos is down. And that's what you want if you're Carlos Carter. Get a little few shots inside the paint. Get a little el jump, elbow jumper. Get yourself going. Maybe long shots will start to fall for him. Washington inside, Granberry, they go inside now. Price spins, tough move by the big guy, and Sleeve is there to collect the rebound. Lockhaven just struggling to finish at the rim. Carter thought about the three, pulls it back, Sleeva will take the three, Dom on the way, no, rebound long, and it's Washington again. These guards are so quick at getting those long rebounds for Lockhaven, and a foul on Biss. I'll be his second. Yusef Diabate is into the game for Shippensburg. We have talked so much about how well he has played for this team, as is freshman Mike Dunn. Dunn played nine minutes in the 
first lock haven game, 18 in the second, but he's just one of six shooting against the Eagles this season. I was getting ready to say a small lineup for lock haven, but now I saw Justin McPherson in there. And ship will be a small lineup without Nedro anyway, but Diabate three inches shorter as Granberry, the deep three, knocks it down, and Lockhaven has tied this at 23. That's one guy you don't want to get the hot hand if you're Shippensburg. Daquan Granberry, he, he had a tremendous game. Johnson around the dial, out to Carter. Quick to rotate out on him is Montague. Carlos got loose. Jumper no. Stewart the rebound. Yeah, that's another jumper going away from the bucket. See if Lock can take advantage here. Goes by Dunn, and then Dunn cuts the baseline off, forces the bad pass, and here comes Ship. Lob Carter, and he missed the dunk, but Johnson's there for the rebound. Rashawn turns, and he uses the window and scores. Again, that's that's what makes Shippensburg lethal in transition. You got Carlos Carter. And Rashawn Johnson, both high flyers. Got to find them going toward the rim. Washington with 15 to shoot. Gets separation, and then he's fouled by Hardy. That'll be Hardy's first. That'll be the sixth team foul on ship here with 4.03 to go in the half. Just three fouls caught on Lockhaven so far. Lockhaven very disciplined so far on the defensive end, though. Yep. No one really in foul trouble here in this first half. Shippensburg's just been knocking down shots. And Mark Anthony Fidelis back in. Yeah, Lockhaven, and, and it's a nester staple. They will tend to play physical but not overdo it. They, they can play a brand of basketball in which they will body you up, and it's smart. Mm -hmm. We've seen them do that to Shippensburg a bunch over the years. Two point, rather it's a tie game at 25. Diabate finds Carlos Carter. Done. To the bucket, Mike uses the square and puts it home. Tough, tough drive there by Mike Dunn. Getting a pump fake, getting his defender off his feet and attacking. That's a good sign to see him take guys off the dribble. We know he can shoot. Has not had the efficient season he had hoped as a freshman, but he, he can light it up. Loose ball, Johnson. Oh, he crossed over his man but lost the handle. Got it back, and Hardy has poked away. And it'll stay with Ship. We got a foul on Lockhaven. It'll be on Mark Anthony Fidelis. Got a little swipe at Kyle and Hardy's arm. Yep, that'll send us to the timeout with 3.18 to go in the first half. Two point lead for Shippensburg. You're watching live coverage of the men's PSAC tournament on the PSAC network. Did you know 95% of Shippensburg University graduates are employed within two years of graduation, making 27% above the national average? With over 71,000 alumni to network with, SHIP prepares you for success because SHIP is it. Three sixteen to go here in the first half. Three eighteen to go in the first half. And it is a two-point lead for Shippensburg as the Raiders... And Lockhaven go back and forth here at Haggis Fieldhouse tonight. And uh, Shippensburg shooting 46% from the field, but Lockhaven shooting a really good 55% from the field. But what's killing them right now is the nine turnovers that they have. They're forcing little passes that aren't there. And Shippensburg getting them out of transition. Now it's not just Biss that's been shooting the ball extremely well for Shippensburg. They as a team, the last two games, Shepard last Wednesday, they shot 55% in the first half and 52% in the second half. 54% for the game was the highest they shot in any game this season. And then on Saturday, 43%. If you're a coach and you shoot anything over 40% in a game, you're going to be happy about that. Absolutely. Obviously, you want north of 45%. I understand that. But 43% for a game with the amount of shots these guys put up, that is marksmanship by this Shippensburg team. They have been hot as a team as Johnson spins away and fades away and knocks down the jumper. Beautiful display of footwork there by Rashawn Johnson. A little jab step. 
attack off the jab step. And Under three to go in the first half. 20 to shoot for Lockhaven. Montague. Fidelis. Started by the freshman Dunn. Back to Montague with 12 to shoot. Montague bodying up Carter using that strength. No. Fidelis somehow was there for the rebound. Spins on Dunn. High arcing. No. That was way short. Great Hardy job with Mike Dunn making it difficult. It was. He is playing some good defense here tonight as Carter steps inside the arc. Corner goes to Hardy. Open three on the way. No. Rebound. Sleeve up. Right up. And no. And Lockhaven's Washington comes away with it. Dom Sleeve a little, little mistake there going up with his left hand, not his right hand on the right hand side. That's the eighth rebound for Washington in the first half. A couple of his rebounds are coming off of long shots. Step back after he crossed his man over. No, Sleeve with a rebound. Correction, that was Washington's seventh rebound. Four point lead for the Raiders, 150 to go, first half. Corner, it's Sleva. Up top, Hardy, Dunn, open three for Mike on the way. Got it! Mike Dunn showing off the skills here in the first half tonight, and that blows it out to a seven point lead with 138 to go in the first half. It is a 30 second timeout called by Mike Nestor and Lockhaven. As Shippensburg continues to shoot the three with efficiency tonight, Biss and then Dunn. And Dunn they got a seven-point lead. knocked down a really deep shot from the logo over there on the off other side of the floor from us. I would say possibly from Newville. There is the open three by Dunn. That is a great sign to see if you are Chris Fight. They want him to be more physical. They want him to play better defense. He's had a couple of Solid defensive stance here in the last couple of minutes, and then he's shown taking the guy off a dribble and then was able to drain that three pointer. And St. Michael Dunn stepping up big, especially with Jake Biss going out in foul trouble with two, two fouls here in the first half. Fidelis will take it across half court. 90 seconds to go in the first half, seven point ship lead. Montague, Fidelis, quick catch and shoot three. No. Rebound tapped into the corner. And Hardy will have it for Shippensburg. Look, Ion. Five on four. Up ahead. Johnson hop step through the lane. That's gets the roll. Beautiful hop step by Rashawn Johnson. Get himself some space. Again, he is he's a really, really talented ball player. Talented athlete. Well, where would they be without him this season? He has been a Tremendous addition to this team. Montague with under a minute to go, 15 to shoot. Montague between the legs, drives on Carter to the bucket. Carlos, good defense, sleeve of the rebound. 16 second difference between game and shot, so Lockhaven should get one more possession. Carlos Carter doing a great job of defending Damir Montague. Montague getting downhill off of these ball screens. Done. Got loose from the defender. Gets the roll on the three-pointer. We got an injured Lockhaven player on the floor. It is Fidelis. Dunn got loose from him and drains another three-pointer for the freshman as they will tend to Mark Anthony Fidelis. You hate to see that. He is clutching the right knee, it looks like anyway. Looks Isaiah like Stewart sneaky. will come into the game here. And they're going to try to get Mark Anthony Fidelis off the floor. Can't tell if it's the shoulder or if it's the knee. It looks like it might be a shoulder injury. He already has tape on the shoulder. Yeah, it holds his side, so. Mm -hmm. Looked like at first he was grabbing the knee, but could have just been the way that he was rolled up on the floor. So a good sign to see that he's able to walk off the floor. Ship has a 12-point lead now with 28 seconds to go. Shot clock will be dead. Stewart comes in for Fidelis. And he has the kinesiology tape on the shoulder there, and that's not something you want to see if you're Lockhaven. Haven. One of your starting guards go down with a shoulder injury. Mike Dunn with eight points in the first half. That By far the most productive first half he's had all season. That means someone has to step up here for the Bald Eagles. Could it be Isaiah Stewart? Montague has it with 10 to go in the half. 
Ten to go. Montague. And the defense, Diabate in there. Hardy on Washington. Washington tries to blow by, fade away. Diabate, the rebound. No, Rollock even got it back, but Stewart could not connect in time. A furious ship rally. 12-0 run over the last 345. They hit six of their last eight and go up by 12 here in the first round of the PSAC men's basketball tournament. We'll take time out for halftime. Come back with your stats and the second half. You're watching live coverage of the men's PSAC tournament on the PSAC Network. At Shippensburg University, we don't just celebrate success. We live it with endless academic opportunities, a vibrant campus life, and a community of alumni support. At SHIP, you design the future you want. There are so many reasons SHIP is it.
After 20 minutes, it is Shippensburg ahead of Lock Haven, 37 to 25 here in the first round of the PSAC men's basketball tournament. Look at the first half statistics. You see them there. Shippensburg, a 50% first half. So again, they continue their hot shooting of late. Lock Haven, 41%, almost 42% shooting. And uh, Jake Biss picked up right where he's been at pretty much for the last week. Mike Dunn, a big first half, three for three, hit a big three there to close the half. Made a couple of nice defensive plays as well. For Lock Haven, they're going to be without Mark Anthony Fidelis. He is out for the game. He's got his arm in a sling. He played almost 15 minutes, 0 for 2, got hurt late in that first half on Dunn's second three. So he is done, and that means a bigger role for Isaiah Stewart in the second half. Lockhaven was led in the first half by Eli Washington. Pretty good game from him, but I I don't know what else you can say about the way Shippensburg's been shooting the ball lately, but man, oh man, is this team hot at the right time for sure. Yeah, Shippensburg's taking advantage also of shots in the paint and uh, points off turnovers. Ball came with nine turnovers here in this first half. Shippensburg scoring 11 off those nine turnovers. It's a 12-point ball game. And yeah, Chris Feit's been looking for somebody, anybody, to step up and play a big role off that bench. Mike Dunn in five minutes of floor time, three for three and eight points. So he provided that spark necessary. Again, the winner of this game will go to East Stroudsburg on Wednesday night for the quarters, and that is in the upper half of the brackets. That means lurking out west, Cal and Slippery Rock tipped off tonight at 6.30, and they will play Indiana. The winner of that game will play Indiana. And then the winner of that quarterfinal will get either Shippensburg or East Stroudsburg in the semifinals on Saturday. And those semifinals, if IUP wins, would be out west. If Cal wins, could be out west. Mercyhurst is the number two seed, so it could even be as far west as Mercyhurst. Lock Haven ball to start the second half. McPherson, who had a hot start, kind of quieted down late. And that's uh, first half, misses the first jumper of the half. And here comes Biss. Well, a short hand on that from McPherson. He's grabbing his arm. And he can ill afford to lose anybody else as Johnson is in the paint, goes by Granberry, spins. Oh, what a move by Johnson to turn around and the hook with the right hand. And it's a 14-point Shippensburg lead. A little Kiva Lajuan-esque type of move right there. Faking the faking the spin and going up with the right-handed hook shot. Yeah, Sean Johnson can also do a lot. He's been doing a lot recently for the Shippensburg team as well. The ship team that is playing with a lot of confidence right now. As McPherson will take the three. No, Sleva skies in there for the rebound. Just look at where Sleva. Sleva was at the top of the key and got back in the paint to get that rebound. Shot with a long shot. I always say long shot, long rebounds. But again, that, that wasn't a long rebound. It's just a nose for the ball. Johnson again trying to muscle through two defenders. And Sleva gets the rebound, but there is a foul. That's going to be on Johnson, I believe. It would be on Johnson. Kind of wrapped around a lock even bald eagle there. Second foul on Rashawn. Nobody really in any foul trouble. Biss has two and Johnson has two, but... Nothing really to worry about just yet if you're Shippensburg. And it's early in the second half, too. You don't want to risk getting a third foul. Montague, Stewart, McPherson, Washington, and Granberry for Lockhaven. Stewart lost this for a moment. Eli, pull-up jumper on the way, short. Rebound, Sleva. That's the guy you want shooting the ball, though, if you're Mike Nestor. He's a guy that started off the game really strong. Feet underneath to Johnson, and again, trying to muscle through traffic and the tough angle, but Rashawn Johnson connects. Mike Nestor and Brian Alexiak both wanting to walk. Again, footwork is a big key for Rashawn Johnson's game. He's not only really well in the post, but he can also stroke the ball from deep if left open. McPherson, jumper. Uh, and that one will rim in. A soft Big touch. Big shot for Lockheed. It was one of the first field goals in a while. Get something going, maybe get a couple hey, stops. Sleva. This who was red hot in the first half. Carter off the screen. Carter trying to shake loose. Gets it to Johnson at the foul line. 
turns, one with the right, draws the contact, and Rashawn will shoot two with 17-10 to go in the half. And McPherson, by the way, continues to hold his right elbow. Actually, it's his left elbow. Rashawn, Rashawn Johnson. Rashawn Johnson making a big game impact right now. Ever since Biss went down with foul trouble. Him and Dunn both. Dunn coming off the bench, knocking down a few big shots. To start this big run to end the first half, and they're on a little run to start the second half as well. Trippensburg is 16th in the PSAC in free throw shooting. Johnson makes both. 16 point lead for the Raiders. A little horn set here for Lockhaven. Something to get McPherson in the post. Matched up on Sleva, spins right hand, no. Rebound, Johnson tied up with Granberry, but somehow kept his balance. And Rashawn sidesteps the defense. Sleva, Johnson out to, they wanted to go to Biss, it was tipped, but. Little argument over. Little argument over here. Yeah, where the ball should go. Biss said it was tipped. Everybody in the crowd, of course, is going to agree with this. Everybody except those in maroon, and the reach-in foul on sleeve is called on the other end. Yeah, because it, it, it was within Jake Biss's reach, and he didn't even go after it. He, he thought it was tipped. But unfortunately, both officials did not see that. Johnson, or rather Washington, off the Little inbound. Wants to make the call, and that's a guy you want to get hot. And he has had himself a good first half. Averages 13 per game, and he's already at that mark with 16.20 to go in the game. Lob, Johnson hits off the side of the glass, bits the rebound. Hardy, they work it around. Open three for Carter on the way is no good. And Stewart the rebound, bits with a little reach in to tip it away. Here comes Washington the other end, all the way in the lane. Floater is good. And all of a sudden, Lockhaven gets Lockhaven. Yeah, a little... Get back, run here for the Eagles. They pulled in 11. Carter harassed on the wing to Johnson. Inside, Sleva. Not a lot cutting when the ball goes in the post. Out to Hardy for three. He drains it. When you can shoot like that, you don't need to cut. Kyan Hardy's second field goal of the night is first three. He's got five, and it's back to a 14-point lead. Penetrate by Washington now. Granberry has it. And Haggett Fieldhouse faithful. Starting to get into this one. Washington drives. Contact on Hardy. And Eli Washington will go to the line and shoot a pair after we get the timeout. 15-16 to go in the first half. Ship in control, but Lockhaven's showing a little bit of fight here. You're watching the men's basketball tournament on the PSAC Network. And passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student athletes are honored as scholar athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. Fifteen, sixteen to go here in the game, and it's Shippensburg ahead by 14. And out of this timeout, there will be free throws attempted by the Eagles as Lockhaven has shown some punch here to start this. Not literally, but shown some punch here to start this second half. No changes for Ship. Johnson, Carter, Hardy, Sleva, and Biss. Eli Washington to the free throw line. Definitely would say a little fight back from the Bald Eagles, especially uh, sophomore guard here, Eli Washington, having a great game so far. And I do expect a run at some point. Washington hits the first free throw. 
he and Ty Crespo had some absolute battles at the high school level. That was one of the best matchups to watch. Those two at rival high schools, Mannheim Township and Hempfield. Always a good contest to watch those two. Carter gets loose from the defense, hands it off Johnson, through traffic, and Rashawn lays it off the window and in. Carlos Carter driving and kicking it, dumping it off to where the help comes from. Not only that, Rashawn Johnson, just a little pump fake to get a defender off his feet, get him off balance, and get the easy finish. Granberry gets by Johnson, jumper on the way, got it. Granberry's having a nice night trying to keep his team alive. Down to 13. Biss hands it off. You just sense Ship needs one of those momentum boosts, like a three from Biss, an alley-oop dunk. Just something to let Lockhaven know that they're still in charge here. They're Hardy. the ball really well, though. Oh, they are. Go. Hardy separates. No, and Washington the rebound. Washington with his eighth rebound of the night, and then they overshoot Granberry on the way down the floor. Mike Nestor wanted a push off on Hardy on the other end. And Granberry did a good job of leaking out in transition. That's the pass that just couldn't get to him. He couldn't corral it. And a little delay there to get the ball back. Ready to go. Went off to the corner of Huggis. And this will walk it across the floor with 14 10 to play. Jake. They double team him, gets loose. Jake fires the three, and he knocks down yet another one. It's a deep two, correction, a deep two for Biss. And he is still hot tonight. Five of eight, 13 points for the senior. His last game at Huygis, and he's putting on a show. Just imagine if he didn't get in the foul trouble that first half. He'd be really putting on a show. You got to give credit again, Shippensburg. Here, Carlos. That'd be showtime here. Tips it away, and he bodied the defender, but Sleva's there to pick up his teammate and lay it in. Dom Sleva, just a nose for the ball when the ball goes up to the rim. McPherson scream. The Carter fights through that. Montague. Tenth rebound on the night for Dom Sleva. Surprise, surprise. Washington can't go inside with it. Excellent job by Sleva defensively. Washington loose. Now he'll put the jumper up. Carter was there to alter it. Sleva and then the hold foul. That should be an intentional foul on Washington if we're going the Hardy, by the book. The Hardy family. Hardy family up there wants a foul. They want an intentional no, foul. I, they're discussing this. That is, he made no attempt to stop the ball. And that is by definition an intentional foul. And that really should be, if we're going by the book, and they will call a flagrant one, wrapping the player up. So that's a good decision by the officials, a good job to discuss it, and a good job to make sure they got the call correct. It is the correct call, because Washington, again, made no effort to stop the ball. He makes an effort there to stop the ball, and maybe gets a piece of his body. That is a smart foul, though. Prevents Shippensburg from getting an easy layup in transition. Hardy banks that one in. Uh, so much focus on the officials. Second one by Hardy's good, too. So much attention on the officials in every single game, but with no review available until Saturday semifinals, that is the uh, excellent job by this crew to discuss that at half court and get the call right. And they will reset the shot clock to 20 seconds because the possession had started. So Biss gets it off the inbound. Making sure that call was quick, correct as well. A quick offensive set here for Shippensburg. 12 to shoot. Sleva. Hardy. Hardy will go or try to go by everybody. Tough angle, no. Johnson the rebound, has it stripped. Got it back, Rashawn, no. And the ball loose, and McPherson picks it up. I'll tell you what, I've never been impressed with an offensive rebound there. Rashawn Johnson got up to get that ball. Montague out to Granberry. Nifty move behind the back. Granberry fires the three. Turns and he talks to Johnson. They jaw back up the floor. There's two kids from Philly, Simon Gratz and Chester. This to Hardy. Carter, 15 to shoot. Hardy again. 
Hardy spins and is tied up. Good defense by Lockhaven. Here comes Stewart. Good help. Good help defense there by Isaiah Stewart. Washington slides to the three-point line. Inside McPherson. We got a battle inside, and Sleeve is going to get called for his second foul. That'll send us to the under 12 with 11.54 to play. 54-38, Shippensburg. You're watching the men's PSAC tournament on the PSAC Network. It's time to make the PSAC yours. More than 7,500 student-athletes working to become champions in 23 championship sports at 18 universities, educating more than 118,000 students and supported by an alumni base of over 900,000. All in and all ready to make the PSAC yours. It's the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Eleven fifty-four to play from Haggis Fieldhouse. Last game of the year in this building as the Shippensburg men will be on the road the rest of the way. And they have a 54-38 lead over Lockhaven, trying to get to Wednesday's quarterfinals, which would start at 7 o'clock at ESU. And that, of course, the rubber match between those two as well. Each team with a win on the home floor this season. ESU, that was a, at the time a, a sh almost a shocking win here by ESU. And just what they were able to do. Shippensburg looked like it was going to turn the corner and really start playing some good basketball at that point. And then ESU showed up. One final already tonight. Cal U has defeated Slippery Rock. So Cal will go to IUP in Wednesday's quarters. Could be a possible Cal U, IUP matchup, both men's and women's. It's just different sites. Yep. Eli Washington with another jumper. Interesting matchup there. Those two obviously have played already twice, being in the West, but Cal U, we saw how physical they were. Phillip Austin here early in the season. That'll be a test for IUP for sure. As Carter fires the three, no. And that one racing towards the sideline. It'll stay with Ship. New face, Damon Grip. Damon Grip, the freshman from Tyrone, a Mountain League MVP last year. I got the coach against him, ironically. Up at Phillipsburg. Family is in the building tonight. His dad, the head coach at Tyrone. Left-handed athlete. Deep three by Carter on the way. In and out. He's almost halfway down. Washington gets another rebound. He's got a double-double here tonight, or he's working on a double-double. That's his ninth rebound. Yeah, he's at nine rebounds. He's rebound away from a double-double. He's playing a really good game tonight, though. McPherson, tough drive there. And McPherson couldn't hit it. Really got cold here. This the other way to the bucket, reverse layup, and Jake scores again. He is doing that, it all here tonight. That might need a replay next time out. That was a tremendous play for Jake Biss. Little Dr. J.S. scoop shot up and under. Granberry and Johnson battling all night. Tipped out of bounds or tipped towards the end line by McPherson. Here comes Biss. This with a little giddy up and a step. What a feed to Carter off the window and no, but he is fouled. I'll tell you what, if that would have fell, this probably would have been the loudest I've ever heard at Haggis Fieldhouse in a while. Two great possessions by Jake Biss. Foul's going to be on Montague, his third, and that will send Carter to the line. Mike Dunn is set to check in for Shippensburg. Carter misses the front end. Hardy will take a seat for the Raiders. You know, you start looking at the potential matchups here the rest of the way. We know Ship will go to East Strouds if they can win this game. Shepard Westchester at Millersville and then Pitt Johnstown Gannon at Mercyhurst. Cal U in Indiana, you almost, almost, if you're Shippensburg, root for IUP in that sense because you've already won a game there yep. and you were going there to play in the NCAA tournament anyway last season with some confidence to try to get a game back they've already beaten them there this season I I'm not so sure that I'd want to go that whole way out to Pittsburgh and play Cal which is a very physical team so you almost root for IUP in that sense I think if you're Chris Fight 
This defense by Ship. That, I mean, that or you don't really want to go up the tough. You don't really there. want to go up the Erie to play Mercy. Yeah, you don't want really any part of that trip. Drive. Any part of that trip at all is Johnson's going to get called for the foul, and Granberry will shoot three. Yeah, you have to go all the way out to the corner of the state, the northwest corner of the state, and you're staying there. You're, you're packing to stay because your plan is to not come home on Saturday. Tough week. It is a tough week. They really should. And I've thought this for just about any tournament. I think everything should be at one location for the week. I would love it to have a, say something like a Giant Center, Hershey, Middle well, of the State. Even just one of the venues for the, the teams, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're going to play crossover games and you're going to have that factor into your rankings and all that kind of stuff, have the crossover game count. Who has the best crossover record? Yep. They get to host it then. should be as simple as that. You know, factor your, your record in your division, obviously, but Unfortunately, or, or you could go, you know, like if you have a one seed on each side or a one and two, whatever the highest seed is left overall would be the one that hosts. It doesn't matter if it's east or west. Unfortunately, Eric, we aren't in charge of the PSAC. No, we are not. This I, always would say, I always would say that to Bill. I'm like, why can't we just have it like the neighboring conference, Mountain East, CIAA, all have their tournaments in one location? Jake with four to go gets it to Hardy. Hardy lost the handle, has to throw it up, fades away. Kion gets the roll as time expires. Right now it seems like everything's just going right for Shippensburg. A shot like that, lock Haven, you can't complain about that possession. Almost get a turnover, but Kion Hardy just knocks down a jumper. 17-point lead, make it 15 now as Washington banks that one in. It was a very acrobatic, acrobatic finish there by Eli Washington. 20 points for him. He's... He's having himself a night. He'll be fun to watch down, down the road here in the PSAC. Not if you're an opponent. Oh, as, yeah. As Carter, three on the way is good. If you're a fan of PSAC basketball, he'll be fun to watch. Carlos Carter with his three-pointer. He's had a two-for-12 night, but that is a good awesome. sign to see. And he goes to the floor and is going to get called for the foul. That's his second foul. Team sixth with 8.43 to go. Granberry will take a seat and Stewart's back for Lockhaven. 18 point game, 8.43 to go. Mike Dunn is in the game for Shippensburg. Remember, he had that hot close to the first half. Absolutely amazing offensive set they ran for him. Get him wide open off of a double screen. Washington around that screen. Throws it across the lane. Price spotting up on Diabate, and he puts it off the window. Hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. Great, move by, great move by Price. Price, uh, James Price, a little up and under hook shot, get it go off the glass. Switch one through four. Rip in, rip in. Hardy drives in the lane, contact. It looks like the foul is going to be on Damon Grip. Damon Grip attempted to take a charge, but I believe he was in the restricted area. And he's on Grip. That's the fourth on Lockhaven with 8.09 to go. This will inbound to Carter. Catch and shoot off the inbound, and Carlos has hit two in a row. And again, Carlos Carter shot one for nine from three-point land up in Lock Haven. It's great to see him knock down a few shots, get himself confident. I also believe, though, that's after Carlos Carter really didn't have a had a bad shoulder, got hurt in the home game against Lock Haven. We got a 30-second timeout going to go to the media. Montague drained that jumper for Lock Haven. We'll take timeout as well. Shippensburg in control, 65-48. You're watching the men's basketball tournament on the PSAC Network. Did you know 95% of Shippensburg University graduates are employed within two years of graduation, making 27% above the national average? With over 71,000 alumni to network with, SHIP prepares you for success because SHIP is it.
7.51 to go in this one. And we got Shippensburg in front. And we got a correction here on the last bucket by Carter. That's actually going to be a two. A two pointer, so it's going to change our score by a point. Should be 64 48. 16 point game here for. They're adjusting the score here. Update from the other games going on in the bracket right now. Shepard trailing Westchester 69 66. And that is with about seven and a half minutes to go. Other scores in the women's side of things. Pitt Johnstown defeated Seton Hill tonight 78 to 62. So they go to Gannon on Wednesday for their quarterfinal. As we mentioned, Eric, that's never a fun trip up the Erie. It's just up in a different area. Shepard also won on the women's side, so they are at Bloomsburg on Wednesday night as well. We got an offensive foul on Diabate. That's why he got his knee out on that screen. And now we're back into the media time. And now we're going to take another timeout with seven and a half to go. This will be the under eight timeout officially. 64 48, Shippensburg. You're watching live coverage of the men's PSAC. First round on the PSAC Network. And passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student athletes are honored as scholar athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. 7.30 to go here from Highgate's Fieldhouse. It's 64-48. They do officially change that Carter, that last Carlos Carter basket to a two. Carlos tonight has eight on three of 13 shooting. Shippensburg shooting 52% right now. Lockhaven has cooled off slightly down to 48. Both are shooting very well from three tonight. Ship at 44%, Lockhaven at 50. So Ship continues its toward pace. Both these teams are shooting well here of late. Ship's hit four of its last four, Lockhaven five of its last seven. And we got a 64-48 lead for the Raiders right now as they're trying to lock up a trip to East Stroudsburg on Wednesday night and keep their season alive. Looks like Lockhaven going to maybe apply. Oh, no. So on the floor for Shippensburg will be Biss, Hardy, Carter, Johnson, and Slee with a five, the starting five. Lockhaven will counter with Stewart. And let's see who else. Montague and Washington, obviously. we got some discussion going on here to figure something out. I don't know if it's who has possession of the ball or... Price is also out there for Lockhaven as his grip. Yeah, it looks like they're reviewing. They're trying to figure out who has the arrow, I believe. <laughs> Officials are still discussing something here. Mike Nestor. I'm thinking it might be possession of the ball. I think it is possession Possibly. of the ball, yeah. That's what it sounds. All right, so they've readjusted the score again. They're going to move it back to a three. They did move this back to a three-pointer, so I'm not sure. So they initially called three. Then they yep. said it was a, a long two after a discussion. They moved it back to a three. Then they discussed it again and took it back oh, to a three, so now it's 65-48 again. Anyway. Montague, Washington, Price, Stewart, and Grip for Lockhaven. Washington 
7.18 to go. Still plenty of time for Lockhaven here. Kai Hardy defending Washington well here. Really is. Staying in front. Washington did a great job of denying that screen. No room with Hardy. They try to go back door, and that was tipped by Carter. He comes out of there with it. Off the bis. Montague shows a little token. Carter. Hit two in a row. A little four out, one in offense here for Shippensburg. Dom Sleeve going to get some ball screens. Johnson, a chance to get downhill. Steps through the defense, out to an open sleeve for three. Got it. Dom tonight continues his hot shooting. That's his first made three of the night, but he's got nine. Working on yet another double-double here tonight. And Shippensburg has a 20-point lead. Montague inside to Price, tipped out of there by Sleva, and it is off of Sleva. Stay with Lockhaven. Granberry and McPherson are back in. Grip and Price will take a seat for Mike Nestor. And if you're Shippensburg, you have a chance of having, say, not only five, but possibly six players in double figures. Foul and Kai and Hardy, that'll be his third. That's the teammates. Carter, Sleva, and Biss all have two. Johnson and Hardy each have three. It's going to be Washington going to the line. He's three for four tonight from the line. Yeah, and Lockhaven will be shooting the rest of the way now as there's 626 left, and Chip just picked up its eighth foul. So missed by Washington and Sleva, another rebound. Washington. A little frustrated after missing that first front end on the one and one. 66 rebounds for Sleva in the last five games. We talk about Biss being on a tear shooting. Sleva's on a tear rebounding as Johnson fires a three no. And McPherson the rebound. And if you're Lockhaven here, you might want to start attacking. Attacking the rim. Inside, and McPherson's going to get called for the offensive foul. That'll be his first. An offensive foul there. It might have been on McPherson. Dom Sleeve causing an offensive foul. Seems we're doing a great job of locking down a lot this. of players. Just mm -hmm. Washington, the other one to get hot. I mean, it's almost automatic at this point. A little bit of delay of game here on Dom Sleeve for putting the ball down right underneath the hoop after Biss made that three. This has 18, and he's four of six from three-point territory tonight. He's shooting 70% from the floor in this game. There is not a hotter shooter in the PSAC right now than Jake Biss. McPherson bodying up Sleeva turns. Nice job by McPherson. Nice, nice hook shot by McPherson. Throw that one in. 21 point lead for Ship. This in his last home game here at Hygis. Got to go out with a bang. Carter. And Jake. Dom again. Johnson. Hardy and Biss. Their final game on this floor. Biss out to Carter. Head fake. Steps inside the arc. Jumper on the way. No. Rebound is controlled by Montague. Here comes Lockhaven in transition. Up ahead to Granberry. Granberry in the paint by Jay. Contact and the foul. And the bucket. And that'll be one shot for Granberry. And for Biss, that'll be foul number three with 4.55 to play. Granberry gets to shoot one free throw. He's also, he has a quiet 15, I would say, for Lockhaven. Yeah, he has played very nicely here for Lockhaven tonight. So has McPherson. McPherson's been in a battle with Sleva in the paint all night long as Granberry hits the free throw. He is three for four tonight from the line. 16 points. You wonder, Mark Anthony Fidelis, when they started to make that push in the third, if he would have been on the floor, how much that would have helped him. He has not played yeah. the second half with a shoulder injury. It's an unfortunate way. A little horn set here by Shippensburg. Hardy puts it on the floor, lost the handle. Washington steps in there, and we're going to get an offensive foul, it looks like, on Hardy. 
Correct. That's number four on Kion. Might have been a loose ball foul, actually, so it's not an offensive foul. If it's an offensive foul, they should be. Mike Dunn is going to come in for Kion Hardy. And it's a good job by Chris Fight. He's got to preserve Hardy as much as he can here for four and a half minutes. You, you just never know. Still, still an 18 point game. As Washington, that one rims out. A little frustration shown by Washington after missing that free throw. It's two free throws in a row he's missed. You can't let that get in your head, though. It's, I'd say the free throw line is kind of a mental game. Not the second one. Well, Eli's played tremendous here tonight. It, Lockhaven loses this game. It is not because of Eli Washington. He started hot, and he has kept his team in it as much as he has possibly been able to here. Being up done now. Now he steps out on Biss. Biss, a little shake there to lose him. Screen, Biss spins. Another one, Biss to Johnson with eight to shoot. Johnson fires a three, no. Carter couldn't get the rebound, and here comes Carter. Stewart. Carter did a good job of crashing off at the glass. Stewart the other way, and they lay it up and in. All of a sudden, Lockhaven has Lock gotten Haven creeping in. into it. Yeah, now. they really are. Five of their last five field goals, 8-0 run the last minute. This is what we're saying about Hardy is that Chris Fight's got to pre preserve him as much as he can. Dunn played so well in that first half. Hasn't had much of a chance here in the second. Down to 10 to shoot. Johnson, and we get a hand check foul on Granberry. Lose the shot clock back to 20 seconds now. So that will take us to the timeout with 3.33 to go. 71 56 Shippensburg. You're watching the men's PSAC first round on the PSAC network. College sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. sports. Three thirty-three to go here from Highgis Fieldhouse. 71-56. Shippensburg again Raiders if they can hang on here in the next three and a half minutes they'll be on the road at East Stroudsburg on Wednesday that'll be a seven o'clock tip off from ESU Cal is already in the books tonight with a win over Slippery Rock so they will take on IUP Shepard and Westchester we last checked they were locked up in a tight battle in the second half and it is Westchester now with a lead of 80 to 72. And that is with two minutes to go at Shepard. So Westchester looks like they might actually steal that thing on the road. And that would set up a matchup with Millersville. Actually, that game is at Westchester. I misspoke there. So they are defending the home court. They are the four seed. And Millersville, the number one seed in the east. IUP, the number one seed in the West and nationally ranked. Done with six to shoot. Mike's got to hurry. And they get it to Jake. Jake will pull up for three and in and out. And that one clanged off the glass as well. Sliwa keeps it alive. Done. And they keep it alive with this. Yeah, settle it down. Coming up on three minutes to go in this first round matchup. Ship is going to have to win three more times to claim the PSAC. Biss, pull up jumper on the way, gets the roll! Jake Biss. 20 points. On fire again. <laughs> 17 point lead again as Washington drives and he gets Washington that to go. Just, Washington's just going downhill, he's trying to get fouls. Like, again, they're shooting free throws the rest of the way if you're Lockhaven. And why does I need to draw the contact? Is Biss. Across half court. Shippensburg also shoot free throws the rest of the way. 2.20 to go. Carter. And we have an exclamation point in the works here. Dunn, and he is Dunn's stripped. Dunn's going to be shooting free throws. And 
Mike will shoot here as the foul is on Isaiah Stewart. 80% free throw shooter here, hey, Michael Dunn. 20 for 25 on the season, freshman year. So the home careers for Hardy and Biss. They will come to a close here tonight. Also for Yusef Diabate. You start thinking ahead like we did for the women, and there's a lot of basketball left to be played for the men yet. At least we think there is. And just like that, uh, Michael Dunn kind of a career high. Yeah, 10 points here tonight. Carter is a junior, however, it's interesting with him because, you know, there's always thought process that some of these guys may test the transfer portal, and, you know, he might. I'm, I'm not saying we know that for sure, but, you know, Sleeve is going to be here. Carter would be here. Johnson would be here. Dunn would be here. Crespo saw some time this year. He figures to be the heir apparent to Hardy. Nice move by Carter to go to the window and lay it in. Dunn's your heir apparent to Biss. There's no question about that. Mike will work Absolutely. hard to get strong in the offseason. Mike Nestor wants a timeout with 1.37 to go. And his team down by 19. We'll keep it here during the timeout. And then you, you wonder about the recruiting for this team. You know, Andrew Recchia, can he become a key guy? He was instrumental early on this season. Jeff Helm is another guy at 6'6". Nedro is also back next year. And Satchel Ball is only a freshman, and he's given them plenty of minutes. So I, they lose a ton whenever the, the run is over for Hardy and Biss. And who knows what happens with transfer portal and all that jazz. But if they maintain this roster, even after the graduation of those two guys, this team ain't going anywhere next year. They're going to be right back near the top of the East, if not one of the favorites to win it. It looks like. Chris, looks like Mike Nestor empty in the bench. Yeah, he is waving the flag a little bit here with 1.30 to go. So much respect between those two sides. Nestor and Fight, good friends. As jumper on the way, that is Daryl Wilson. Daryl Wilson, sophomore from Williamsport, right up the road from Lock Haven. Chris Vasquez is also in there, too, and it looks like Chris Fight will do the same. Diabate, Ty Hulsopel, and Andrew Recchia will come in, and that is the curtain call for Jake Biss here at Higus, and also for Sleva and Johnson as the home fans. Jeffrey Helm also checking in now. Yep, the home fans will say farewell one final time to that core. A couple of them will be back next year. Dunn stays out there with this crew. Recchia is in there. It's Recchia, Dunn, Diabate, Halsopel, and Helm. Noah Wilson is going to come in for Lockhaven. Out of three springs right up the road from here. Fun fact, played AAU ball for me when he was a junior and senior in high school. Brady, Good to see him play. Braden Kitt is also in there. Night over for McPherson, and he played really well here tonight. He had a great battle with, with Sleva in the paint. And a, What's that, a heck of a career. It really McPherson. is. Heroic in defeat tonight for McPherson. Open three for Helm. No. Rebound. Recchia made a charge at it, but it's controlled by Lockheed. Under a minute to go. And Shippensburg is going to roll on to the quarters. Wednesday night against East Stroudsburg as Diabate collects the rebound. 18-second difference between game and shot. So we'll have to play out the string here. Raiders will pick up win number 20 this season. Lockhaven season ends at 11 and 16. And they are out. But Mike Nestor continues to build and doing a remarkable job of doing just that. He's got a, he's got a young, solid team, though. Really does. And he recruits year. that area so well up there as Recchia is just going to hang on to it and let the shot clock expire. And Lockhaven will have 19 seconds left, shot clock dead. And that'll be it as Stewart inbounds. Open. Thought about the open three there for Vasquez. He throws it into the corner, and the three-pointer on the way, and it's good for Wilson. Recchia will get the inbound, and Shippensburg will load up the bus and get on the way up to East Stroudsburg as they defeat 
Lockhaven tonight by a count of 77 to 64. Final home game for Jake Biss and Kion Hardy. They did not disappoint. Biss, another marksman-like effort shooting the basketball here tonight to lead this team. And Chris Fight's team red hot right now as they win yet again for the fifth time in a row. We'll get Coach Fight over here for some comments. Get him squared away. Congratulations, Coach, on a, uh, a nice job tonight. I mean, we've, we've talked so much about Jake the last week. I mean, my goodness, again, tonight. But really, everybody, you guys have been shooting the ball well the last week. Yeah, we, um, we're playing good basketball right now. You know, you, you, you want to um, kind of be peaking at the right time and, and, uh, and playing your best. And I still feel like we can be better, but, uh, but I, I like the way we're competing. I like the way we're defending. And, uh, and, you know, if you play D like we have the last three, four games, you give yourself a chance to win. And some guys are playing at a really high level. You know, Jake, uh, all those guys are, are, are uh, having their moments, you know, and, and, uh, and we need them all. We need them all. You've been looking for somebody off the bench. You got it at the first half tonight. Mike Dunn with two really big shots, but he made a great defensive play down the floor, too, yeah. for you. He had a good end of the first half there tonight. Mike's always capable of, uh, of being a spark for us. He, he can he – can, heat up quick he's, he's a great shooter and uh and he's getting better on the defensive end you know and, and uh so yeah he gave us a boost tonight when we needed it rubber match tonight with Lockhaven. you get the rubber match on wednesday night with esu and then you'll either get cal or iup cal won tonight so that's the other quarterfinal matchup just size up the trip to esu for us yeah i mean it's a hard place to go play they, they they're they're pretty relentless with their defense and their pressure and, uh, and, you know, we, we've done an okay job the two times we played them this, this year. First game was a close game here. But we went up and handled that atmosphere up there. I'm sure it'll be, it'll be different now with the students there and, and that playoff atmosphere. But we'll be ready. It'll be a great opportunity for us. We'll see you back here next season, sir. Really appreciate all your help this year. Good luck Thank to you. you. We appreciate you guys, yep. too. Thanks. Chris Fight, the head coach here of Shippensburg. And I don't know that we're going to get a player here tonight. doesn't look like we will, so... That will do it for us here tonight. Yeah, we will not have a player for you tonight. Some final stats for you tonight. Rashawn Johnson with 18, Biss with 20. Carlos Carter had 11. Shippensburg shot 51% from the floor tonight and 44% from three-point territory. Great job on the glass tonight, too. 31-25, they won that advantage. And uh, they hold Lockhaven. Well, Lockhaven did shoot 52% here tonight. They also shot 50 from three. So an efficient night for Lockhaven shooting the ball. Turnovers, 13 for Lockhaven, 10 for Shippensburg. Shippensburg had 21 points off turnovers, and they beat Lockhaven up on the offensive side, 8-3 to three on the offensive glass. So that's going to do it for us here tonight, and that's going to do it for us for our coverage here of Shippensburg basketball from Haggis Fieldhouse. Big thanks to Bill Morgel and his staff and uh, everybody who joined us throughout the season. Terry Byram and I uh, hope to be back with you next fall. Or this coming fall for the start of football season and then right back here at Huggis in November when they tip off the 2022-2023 season. Good luck to Shippensburg as they will head on the road to East Stroudsburg and then head out west, hopefully, for the PSAC semifinals and potentially a PSAC championship game coming up on Sunday. Big thanks again to Chris Fight too, and uh, really to Christy Turn. Those coaches make our job a lot easier and uh, we really, really appreciate them opening their doors for us throughout the season. We'll talk to you next season. Good luck to the Raiders the rest of the way. You've been watching live coverage of the PSAC Men's Basketball Tournament here in the PSAC Network. Have a great rest of your night. Take care, and bye-bye.